This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is the last lecture on process costing. Uh, we've done um, uh, normal and normal losses. We've done um, work in progress. This one, which is chapter 14 of the free lecture notes, is on joint products. Uh, and to explain, first of all, the terminology and the problem, Imagine we make perfume. Uh, perfume, and I think we'll send the ladies watching, there's perfume and there's toilet water, which both sort of smell the same, but perfume is stronger and more expensive. Toilet water smells the same, eau de toilette. So the same thing, but not as strong and cheaper. Now, I don't know how they make them, but let's just suppose the way they make it um, is they put lots of flowers into a big drum, a big tank, uh, lots of flowers, and then put uh, alcohol in it. I think there is alcohol in perfume, I don't know. And um, perhaps they boil it for a while. And after it's all been sitting there for a while, all the dead flowers drop to the bottom. And maybe, now this is the bit that's, uh, I think, clearly going to be rather ridiculous, but still. Maybe, because the perfume's stronger, the perfume sinks to the bottom, and the toilet water, the eau de toilette, goes to the top. Now, I know that's silly, but a bit like milk, you know, um, cream floats to the top. Um, so, perhaps you end up with all the top bit is perfume. And all the bottom bit is this toilet water, eau de toilette. And then they have two taps. And out of one tap comes perfume, out of one tap comes toilet water. Now, however ridiculous that may seem, and it obviously is, the point is that there's obviously lots of cost gone into that um, tank all the flowers, the alcohol, whatever else they put in. But out of it are coming two separate products, perfume, toilet water. Now, perfume um, is a lot more expensive. Maybe this sells at $20 a bottle. Now, toilet water, maybe this sells at only $5 a bottle. But you've two separate products coming out. Uh, and the question is, how are we going to get the cost per unit for each of them separately? I mean, in a sense, we can't because they're made together. You know, you can't say this bit of the flowers is a cost of perfume. This bit of the flowers is a cost of toilet water. We've got two separate products, but they're being made together. Then the costs are sort of shared between them. Well, we call these joint products. Joint products is when you're making two or more products, but in the same process. You can't identify the costs of one, the costs of the other. One extra bit of terminology, though. Once we've taken out all the perfume and toilet water, we're left with all these dead flowers. Well, maybe we just throw them away, but maybe a farmer will buy them to feed his animals. And obviously, if somebody would buy them off us, it's better to sell them and throw them away. But it's really waste. It's really waste. But if we can sell them, you know, for 50 cents or something, obviously any money's better than none. Well, we would call the dead flowers, if we were going to be able to sell them, a byproduct. So a byproduct. Uh, it's not something we're specifically producing. You know, it's not a third product that we're trying to sell in the shops. It's more waste than anything. It, it happens almost by accident. But I say again, if the farmer is prepared to buy the dead flowers from us, obviously at a much lower price than perfume and toilet water, um, then any money is worth 
getting, I think clearly. So there's the terminology, joint products, our main products that they, you know, trying to produce, but they produce jointly. Byproduct, almost an accident, an extra product that appears, but is really just not much more than waste. Well, our job is, in my little example, would be to get a cost per litre or per bottle of perfume out of toilet water. And the question is, how are we going to do it? Well, there are two standard approaches we could take. And let me show you. Can you turn, please, to example one, which is an example of what we call the physical unit spaces. So have a look. During August, the following costs were incurred in a process. Materials, 3,500 kilos for 5,000. Labour and Obeds, 2,300. The production from the process was as follows. 1,000 kilos of A, 2,000 kilos of B. There are main products. Selling price is $5, $2. But we've also got a byproduct. 500 kilos of X, which is scrapped, but we do get 20 cents a kilo. And our job is to get a cost per kilo. What's the cost of our main joint products A and B? Well, physical units, nice and easy. Watch me. First of all, we say, what are the total joint costs? Materials. 5,000, labour and overheads, 2, 3, so a total of 7,300. And there is a byproduct here, um, and this byproduct, since it's really scrap, then unless the question tells you to do different, any money we get from a byproduct we treat it as a negative cost, as reducing the total cost of the main products. So we subtract the money from the byproduct. And how much are we going to get? Well, there are 500 kilos. We're selling it at 20 cents a kilo, so 100. So we say the total cost of our main products of A and B in total is 7,200. How are we going to split that between our main products? Well, on physical units, we just say how many units in total are we producing? Uh, here, our units happen to be kilos. It could be... Um, simply units, or it could be litres, if it was perfume toilet water, but here it's kilos. Uh, and A, we're producing a thousand. B, we'll produce two thousand. Uh, uh, so, yes, we're producing two thousand. So we're producing a total of three thousand units, or three thousand kilos. And therefore, the cost per unit, or the cost per kilo, 7,200, 3,000 kilos. What does it divide to? 24, 7, $2.40. And so, well, there's our answer. The cost per kilo for both A and for B will say the cost is $2.40. Now that's fine, and that's the most obvious way of doing it. However, this answer uh, does show, they illustrate why we, there's another approach that people take. And the reason is this. This question asked us, what's the cost per kilo for A and B? It's $2.40 for both. But it also said, what's the profit per kilo? And just look. A, the sales price of A is $5, of B is $2 per kilo. We're saying the cost per kilo is $2.40 for each of them. Uh, 
And therefore the profit per kilo, A, maybe this is the perfume, is making a nice big profit at $2.60, whereas B is reporting a loss of 40 cents. And not only does that look a bit awkward, but also you're going to get directors, you know, every month we're giving them reports, and every month you're going to get some director saying, oh, well, B's loss making, why don't we stop making B? But of course you can't stop making B, because these two are made together. Think of my perfume and toilet water. And if you stop making B, you stop making A as well. And check my figures if you want, but overall, we're making a nice profit from the two together. And so we are going to carry on producing. But it is going to look a bit silly if every month uh, one's making a great big profit and the other's making a loss. All right, you know, maybe we can put up the price of B, but, you know, probably we can't. There's competitors and things. And so it does look a bit silly here. I mean, it's not always a problem. You know, if they had similar selling prices, we wouldn't have this problem, but oh, it, it can be a problem. And so for that reason, the alternative way of doing it, again, we're after a cost per kilo for both, the alternative is what we call the market value basis. And so look at example two, which is exactly the same example. The figures are identical. But are we going to get the cost per kilo, profit kilo, as I say, using market value? Well, first of all, the joint costs. We've already worked that out. The total of all the costs less the byproduct money is 7,200. But to get a cost per kilo, instead of just dividing by the number of kilos, we're going to share that between the products based on the value of what's produced. Now watch me carefully, it's not hard, but some people try and take a shortcut and get awfully muddled up. What we do is uh, for the two products, A and B, we calculate the total sales value of what's produced. The total value of the production. And so where are we? A, we produce a thousand kilos. Its selling price is five dollars. And so what's coming out of our uh, tank is $5,000 worth of A. What about B? 2,000 kilos, the selling price is $2. And so 4,000. Now what we sell is not relevant, it's the value of what we produce. You know, there are 3,000 kilos coming out. And whether we sell it or whether it's in inventory, the value of it, the sales value of it, is a total of 9,000. What we want to do is split these joint costs of 7,200. Well, in total, we split it according to sales value. So product A, the total value is 5 out of the total output of nine, so we'll give that proportion of the joint costs. And similarly B, the production has a value of four out of a total of nine. And so the joint costs to A will go 4,000 uh, to B, four-ninths of 7,200. They'll go 3,200. I want the joint, uh, the cost per unit, or here per kilo. 
And so now no problem A, a total of 4,000 for production of 1,000. That one uh, we give a cost of $4 a kilo, whereas B, 3,200 for 2,000. That could be given a cost of $4.60, uh, sorry, $1.60. And isn't that now a lot fairer? That you see the selling price of A is 2.5 times that of B. And so we split the costs. A, if you check, is 2.5 times uh, the cost given to B. There's the cost. It did say what's the profit per kilo as well. Well, let's check. Selling price of A is $5, and of B is 2. Uh, the cost of A, $4, and of B, $1.60. And so that problem we had before is now removed. Automatically, both products are reporting a profit. So in a way, it's a bit of a cheat, you know. Do appreciate there's no correct way of splitting because they are made jointly. You can't say these flowers are perfume and these flowers are toilet water. So any way we do it is, well, there's no correct way. Uh, physical units is an obvious logic and certainly if the selling prices are similar, that's fine. Uh, because it can lead to funny reporting market value basis. Well, it solves that problem I referred to. Uh, before I leave it, just one last thing over the page. It says net realizable value approach. This isn't really a new approach at all. It's simply one tiny extra problem that can be, which we need to deal with. If you have a look, it's very similar. During September, the following costs were incurred in a process, the production, uh, 1,000 kilos of A, uh, 2,000 kilos of B, and a byproduct. But here, all the output of A and B incurs further processing at a cost of 480 per kilo of A and 220 for B. Now be carefully and check what's happening. What's happening, imagine it's our perfume and toilet water. Product A perhaps is perfume, and we will end up selling it at 8.40 a kilo, but we can't sell it immediately it comes out of the joint process because we do need to do some further work. You know, perhaps we need to put it in a bottle. So you see, we've got our process, this perfume toilet water business, Out of the top one comes perfume, which I can't spell. But before we can sell it, we need to put it in a bottle. And that bottle costs us, the expert of processing, it costs us $4.80. And then we can sell it for $8.40. So it's not worth $8.40 when it comes down to the process. It's got to be put in that bottle first. And similarly, out of the bottom tap comes our toilet water. But again, that needs further work. Now. That needs putting it in a bottle. Its bottle only costs $2.20 further processing. And then we'll sell it, what's its selling price? Four fifty. Now, uh, the reason uh, this presents a tiny bit of extra work is uh, if we want to use the market value approach. You see, if we're using um, a physical units approach, no problem. We take our joint costs and we divide by the number of units. But if we're using market value approach, the problem is there is no market value when it leaves the joint process. 
and it's the joint costs we're going to need. Now we know how much the bottles cost, and it, precisely whether it's perfume or toilet water, but we still need to split the joint costs. And so let's do it. What are the joint costs? It's the same as before. There are materials of 5,000, a labour of 2,3. Uh, the money from the byproduct to, uh, sorry, 500 kilos at 20 cents is 100. And so there are the joint costs. These are the costs incurred in that tank. We need to split it between perfume and toilet water. And then to get the final cost of perfume, we'll add on 480. To get the final cost of toilet water, we'll add on 220. We're going to use the market value approach. But again, what's the market value when it leaves the process? It's going to be sold for 840, but you can't sell it for 840 until you've spent that extra money. Well, we will take market value approach. Uh, but we calculate what we call the net realisable value. Of the production. And all we do is this. A. How many kilos are coming out? A thousand? We need its market value when it actually comes out of the process. Although we do, we say its final value is 840, the selling price. But we can't sell it until we've put it in a bottle, and the bottle, the further processing, cost 480. So we say, ah, well, let's treat it as though it's value when it comes out of the process. It's 840 minus 480 which is $3.60. And so the total value of the production, 1,000 at 360, is 3,600. And similarly, B, there's 2,000 kilos. Its final selling price is 450, but we can't sell it when it leaves the process. It needs putting in a bottle first. And the bottle, the further processing for that one is 220. So we say its net realizable value when it leaves the process is the difference of 230. And therefore, the total value of the production, 2000 times that, is 4600, giving a total of 8200. And so using those values, we'll now split our joint costs. Um, the way we did before, market value approach. The joint costs are 7,200. Uh, in terms of net realizable value, uh, A is 3,600. Out of a total of 8,200, whereas B is 4,600 out of a total of 8,200. So those proportions of 7, 2, 36 divided by 82 times 7, 200. I'm going to keep this to the nearest dollar. 46 out of 82 times 7,200. Four of three nine. And so what's the cost per kilo? Uh, a, that was the total joint cost for a thousand kilos. Uh, and so it gives a cost per kilo of, I'll keep to the nearest cent, 316. Uh, B, there were 2,000 kilos. And so a cost per kilo of Uh, two, again to the nearest cent, 202. 
Finally, though, and be careful, because there's one last step. That's the cost we're giving per kilo when it leaves the process. But remember, the final cost will be higher because each of them need further work done separately, putting in the bottle or whatever it was. So the final cost for A, it's the joint cost of 316 plus the further processing, which for A is 480. So the final cost is $7.96 per kilo. Whereas for B, finally, the joint cost, we put 2 0 2 The further processing for B is $2.20, giving four twenty two dollars per kilo. And now we are, it doesn't ask us to get profit per kilo here, but we could, in each case, selling price eight forty four fifty less the cost of seven ninety six four twenty two. So I say that's not really a third way. That is the market value approach, uh, but it's just that there is no real market value when it leaves the process because it's not had the further work done. Okay, so at last we've finished all the process costing. Great.